Good evening, YouTubers. I haven't made a video in a while. I'm kind of like that old newsletter writer, Harry Brown. I don't like making videos if there's nothing really much to say. Sometimes I actually do make videos and I don't have much to say, but I'm trying to get away from that. But in the last two or three days, I've been taking a deep dive in cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, stuff like that. So it's been kind of interesting. I just restarted my Spanish. Uh, I have a Spanish tutor. I have a Spanish tutor now or teacher, and I, I've, I've restarted that. So I've been doing that. So it's not that I don't have time. It's just I'm I, I've kind of run out of things to say. In fact, what I want to talk about tonight isn't anything special, but it, it, it's kind of an update. Um. If you don't know, Guatemala, either today or yesterday, I, I can't remember. Now, keep in mind, I don't really watch the news. I don't watch the news in the United States. I don't watch the news here. I don't have a TV probably since at least 20 years. I haven't had a TV. So, well, with the exception when I'm when I'm in the Philippines, in that situation, I had a TV. But that's for other reasons that really aren't important. But in general, I don't watch TV. So I don't keep up with the news. I do read a little bit, but you could say I'm not really well informed of the world events. So that's okay. Anyways, with that being said, I've heard something that I thought maybe wasn't true, but it's true. Apparently, Guatemala is going to shut down the country for, I think, 15 days, two weeks or 15 days. And Mexico says they're shutting their borders down for one month and both the United States land these are all the land I want to be clear these are all the land borders the terrestrial borders so the United States Canada Mexico Guatemala are shutting down their land borders now what does that mean you can fl well, at least for here you can fly out of Guatemala to the states or Mexico I presume anywhere in the world that's actually open now, having said that, if you've been watching the news lately, and again, I'm not like 100% informed on this, so feel free to comment and tell me I'm wrong or I misunderstand something because I, I sometimes do misunderstand things. And sometimes I appreciate when people leave comments like, from what, like here's an example. When the borders were closed in Mexico to the United States in the U.S., that's what I was told in the news. I would go to a, a Facebook group. They would say that too, but then my friends would go to the border and walk right across. And my understanding, the reason that was, is because you could cross in for medical reasons. Again, what I heard today was some Spanish-speaking people told me that if you do want to go to Mexico, you can, but you have to have like a medical reasons. Now, I point that out. It's possible you can cross, but if you're not a national, you might not be be able to cross back into Guatemala and it's really complicated all this stuff but if you're in the past if you were a permanent resident or an national you could cross back in I don't know if that's going to be the same for for permanent residents or not anyways I don't plan to travel the next two weeks and um, I don't plan to travel by airplane in the next two weeks I just point out all this. There's all these loopholes. Half the stuff's never enforced. And I don't know since I'm not going to be crossing the border to see if, if this is actually enforced. But my understanding is if you want to cross a land border or the terrestrial borders of Guatemala, Mexico, you can't unless you have a special reason, unless you're a, um, not an embassy employee, but like a, a, what do they call it? Like you're an ambassador or something like that, then you can. Anyone else, if they wish to want to leave, they can just fly out of the Guatemala. Any country that's open, they can fly to. In general, either need, either need the injection or you need, uh, sorry, the injection right here. You need the injection or, or you know, proof of it, or you need, uh, you know, a COVID test, which most of the time is the PCR test or the antigen test. And that's about all I know. 
I'm not sure why they're doing this. I am told they're doing this because COVID cases are through the roof. But again, my Spanish speaking friend told me, actually, that's not really, well, it may be true that COVID is up. I don't know. He said, excuse me, pardon me. He said the reason they're doing this is for Semana Santa. They don't want people traveling back and forth across the Mexican Guatemalan, Guatemalan border for whatever reasons for that, you know, for that holiday. And so they just decided to close everything down. Here it's like 15 days or two weeks. I can't remember which one it is. I just read in the newspaper, Mexico is going to be closed for 30 days, which is for me hard to believe because they didn't close down through this whole COVID thing. But again, as my, my Mexican or my Guatemalan friend told me, if you have a reason like you need medical care, Mexico in theory will let you cross the border. But my understanding is if you're like a tourist or something, they might not let you come back into Guatemala until the two weeks is up. So anyways, there's that. The reason I'm bringing all this up is because all over the world, not all over, in many parts of the world, for example, a lot, I shouldn't say large parts, since I'm not really aware, fully aware of which parts of Europe, but my understanding is some parts of Europe are closing down again and locking their countries down again. The Philippines is not locking down, strictly speaking, but for people who are under 18, you can't leave your house or whatever that means. <clears throat> for people who are over 18, they can if they're already if you're foreign already in the country. If you're foreign or you're not in the country, they're now doing this thing where they're not letting foreigners in anymore. There's a short period they let you in. Now they're not letting you in. This is all kind of nonsense. Like you, you can't hardly plan to travel. Like you could be traveling, you may get to your destination, but then two weeks after that, maybe you want to fly out and they oh, no, you can't fly out or or whatever. Like to me, it's getting kind of insane. And again, my understanding is the United Kingdom, uh, Central Europe, like Germany. Again, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but so, some parts of Central Europe are closing down again. They even had, I don't want to call them rights, but protesting in uh, the, the Netherlands. I mean, can you imagine the people of the Netherlands, fa all fairly law-abiding citizens, protesting being locked down again? Which I don't blame them, but it tells you that people are getting tired of all this. In fact, if you here in here in Shayla, there's not in general most people wear masks, but you're starting to see more mask fatigue, mask fatigue where people aren't wearing the mask. Also, too, the last I'll say the last two weeks, maybe three, you're seeing more uh, gringos come in, so foreigners starting to trickle back into the country. That's it's nice to see. But since they're going to close things down. I mean the land borders for the, for the next two, 15 days or two weeks. That's going to mean whatever business, a lot of businesses were gearing up for this travel, especially from Mexicans coming into Guatemala and vice versa, Guatemalans going into Mexico. All that business is going to be gone. That's really sad to hear that. That's it's a, This time of year is when a lot of transact, well, a lot of economic transactions for these holidays take place because of Semana Santa. So, it's really distressing to see they're kind of doing all this. To me, it's kind of pointless. I'm not sure what COVID's doing right now as far as the real numbers or, you know, whatever. But that's just my understanding of things. They're, they're going to close things down for a month in Mexico. I don't know how long it's going to be in Canada and the U.S. But again, my understanding of Canada U.S., if you're a U.S. citizen or a Canadian citizen and you want to fly back to your country, you can. But it's also my understanding if you're a U.S. citizen, you can't cross the border into Canada, which more than 80, 90 percent of the time, I don't really care. But every once in a while, I want to go up to Vancouver. But anyhow, uh, it's just it's sad. It's just sad. Like just in my family, we have Canadian relatives and Americans. So it's just like here, there's Guatemalans and Mexicans that, you know, they're related. Their families are on both sides of the borders and they can't eat. Well, they can't legally easily travel you know like i said you can you can just walk across the border you know with no no permission so to speak or you can get you you know you, can, you have your documents and you can just say you're going for medical treatment or whatever so anyways but still it's it's going to affect a lot of the cross-border trade and i don't know what else to say i, I just I really thought this would be over by now. It's not over. I'm really disappointed in the United Kingdom. I think they're going to drag this out for a long time. So if you don't know right now, uh, 
the United Kingdom is their, their PM or their Prime Minister is Boris. <coughs> Excuse me. I would have thought, being from the Conservative Party, he would open their country back up right now, but it doesn't appear to me he is. He's going to keep dragging his feet, dragging his feet. I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm just saying the politics of the situation is it's to the point where he, for whatever reason, is going to keep dragging his feet every two weeks, every month, saying, no, we're going to keep locking down. We're not going to open up. Meanwhile, again, I'm not like really familiar with the United States, but my understanding is right now Florida is fully open. You don't need to wear a mask. You can do whatever the hell you want. Go to the beach. Go to the bars. And then there's California and New York. They're relock. I hate to say relocking down, but they're trying to make people stay home. I don't know how the hell they're going to do that either, but it's just getting really, the world's getting bifurcated in places where you have freedom to do what you want and where there's a lot less freedom to do what you want unless you're doing it in your home. For people who work at home and want to stay home, that's fine. I'm kind of a homebody, so I don't really care. But I would have liked to legally have gone into El Salvador already without a COVID test. And, and it's just a hassle. you got to pay 100 bucks every time across the border, 50 to to $100. And even if you pay that, there's no guarantees. You get a pot, you get a good test, except for the fact that there's a lot of controversy in this. If you're in, if you're in Central America, you probably know that a lot of these tests are fake and they're, when you take them, you're going to 100% pass the test. So there's people kind of upset about that, but I was kind of my suspicious all, my suspicion all along. Like, why are they going to create a test where you can't travel on an airplane? Airlines are going to be incentivized to make sure people pass tests. Governments are going to be incentivized to make sure tourists and business people can travel to do what they got to do. So I'm not really surprised. But some, again, this is hearsay. I don't know. I'm just going by what people told me personally. I know of people who were asked for $600 to get a good test at the land border in Guatemala. They negotiate down to $400. I wouldn't have paid $400 or $600. I would have just went back into Mexico and paid for a antigen test for like $15, bucks. I mean, that's what I did. It's like under $20. Bucks. And... Again, my understanding from the medical people I've talked to that these tests are so unreliable, you can't really take them serious. Like like it was Elon Musk, he took four tests, I think, or it's two or four. Half of them said he had it, half of them didn't. That's how I look at it, just pay for the cheap test and get, get the result that you need to travel. Anyhow... Excuse me. Anyhow, to me, this is all just distressing and kind of bordering on madness. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think about anymore. I'm not normally a conspiracy theory type guy, but if you see what's happening, you kind of see the governments are, are not incentivizing. They're uh, trying to normalize people being locked down. That's, to me, not good. That's not good at all. This normalization of, like, for example, in the United States, people can go back. There's some states, I guess, can, kids can go back. They all have to wear masks. The teacher has to wear masks. No one can see anyone's face. Excuse me. All the children get shot. Well, they don't get shot, but they get the bang, bang test when they go inside. They're tracked with, oh, I forget what they're called, but they're basically tracked by QR codes. Who knows what they're going to do with that information? And once you normalize all this and get citizens used to it, when this is all over, they're not going to stop doing that. They'll have another reason why you have to have a QR code follow you all over the school and your life. And I'm pretty soon, I'm, it wouldn't surprise me if we need QR codes and permissions just to go to, like, I don't remember what country it was. Oh, yeah, Israel. Israel's on the leading edge of this. In Israel, if you don't have a vaccine, you can't go to a restaurant. Or, no, wait, I better back that up. You can't go to a grocery store. Lots of things you can't do. So we might be getting to the point where if you're not vaccinated, you can't legally do anything. You can't go to a store. You can't go to a clinic. You can't get your health care needs met. Maybe not even go to work. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to end this video now. Like, share, or leave a comment. To me, leave a comment on where you think this is all ending or all going. Seems like it's not going in a good way. And if we keep going this way, we're going to, I think we're already in a recession. Well, when I say we, I mean North, North America. 
we see the job numbers come up. The, the numbers are getting better, but we still have a bifurcated economy where there's still a large six segment, at least 10% of the population who can't find a job or get a job. And then there's other people who are getting jobs and finding jobs who are doing okay, dip, just depending on their skill set. That's all I mean. We just got this bifurcated economy and bifurcated world where some people can travel, some people can't. We're in recession in some parts of the world and things are booming or maybe not booming, but okay in other con- other parts of the economy. We have uh, Lebanon. Like two weeks ago, their currency was at like 9000 10000 to the dollar. This last week, it's at 10, 10, 15000 to the dollar. I mean, I think Lebanon might be a test case for where some of this is going for some country. They they had issues before Corona. They just started printing money like crazy. Their currency just collapsed 90% in less than two years. And that's not a collapse in two years, but since 2019 to 2021, less than two years. Again, that's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Their currency has just gone from like 1500 to the dollar to like to the free market. I'm talking the free, the black market, free market to like 15000 this week, I heard. And then last week or the previous week, it was like 9000 10000 depending on various, various, you know, who you went to. I mean, are we going the way of Argentina and Lebanon where the currencies just fall down? And this is going to suck. But anyways, enough shut down the video. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Thanks.